What happens in the head at the time of gestation and birth that makes those brains different? There is a lot of uh, conjecture about the hormonal influences in utero. One of the most interesting studies, scientific studies that's been done, uh, is on the influence of testosterone, intrauterine testosterone, on the fetus. Progressive childbirth by the same woman uh, may result in the third offspring being gay. It is thought and fairly well identified that anti-testosterone antibodies increasing it with each individual male pregnancy are probably responsible for that. How those hormones change these brain structures is something that I think the future has to bring to us. I actually have a very dear friend who is a pharmacist downstairs and he has five boys, but I never have been able to get him to admit which one is gay. <laughs> if one of them is. If one of them is. But there have been verifiable uh, studies that have been done on the development of anti-testosterone antibodies. So that portion of it, the influence of hormones, I think is very significant in the intrauterine part of development. The genetic links uh, indicated by Dean Hammer and uh, Simon LeVay, I think are very, very important. But have been left open-ended. I'm certain that with advances in technology we'll have a lot more knowledge. The criticism of me uh, really centered not so much upon what I was talking about uh, but because of my quote agenda. It, they thought I had this terrible agenda that I was going to march down Market Street with a sign that said gay brain. You know, During the Proposition 8 battle in California, uh, one of uh, our psychiatrist friends had a, a uh, fundraiser at his house. The interesting thing about that particular fundraiser was that I stood up and I said, how many of you here know about Ivanka Savic Berglund? And there was this look around, no one, no one knew. I was, I was as if you will, floored as I was at the, at the Frameline event. One psychiatrist raised his hand and said, yeah, I know about her and what she's done. And to me, it was, it was terribly dismaying that psychiatrists, of all people, would not know of her work. The, the sexual revolution of the 60s and the 70s you know, gave rise to sexual freedom. And sexual freedom gave rise to sexual experimentation. And, and those two uh, advances, if you will, in human behavior uh, gave rise to uh, the AIDS crisis, if you will, it happened. Younger men and women living together in this day and age, in, in the 21st century, are not as fixed uh, on uh, a heterosexual, a homosexual, a bisexual, or in any relationship. They're interested in, hopefully, in people, and they're, they're bonding to them, whomever they may be if indeed the gay brain or the straight brain is fixed at birth, it will be interesting in the future to know whether people who really feel that they can either do both or have a fluidity with it have differences in that brain structure as they age. There are lots of parents who say, I knew Johnny was gay from, from the time that he wanted to play with dolls, so to speak. That's, 
gender nonconformity, the CGN that we talked about earlier, is a very telling phenomenon. It is a window into, if you will, the neurobiology of sexual orientation. And perhaps we can go down the road further, uh, not of the adult gay brain, but of the child, you know, who uh, is obvious to his parents and who is taken for therapy, uh, for behavior. That may give us an additional window uh, to the neurobiology of sexual orientation. <clears throat> is it morally, ethically, and scientifically justified to uh, study children, you know, from birth onward? And that is a question that I really cannot and do not want to answer uh, at this point because I, I don't know how to answer it. Do I feel it's there when we're born? from the vast majority of people you talk to. I think if you walk down any street in any town or city and people give you an honest answer, they'll tell you exactly what they are and that they knew it from time immemorial.